Hey everybody, this is your brother boss, Nikhil Bala. So, have you ever wondered how a skydiver falls down to the earth but then lands safely? Yes, that is what we are going to be talking about. How a parachute works with science, forces and everyday science. So, as you know from our previous knowledge, everything we drop falls down to the earth. Because there is a force called gravity which pulls, well, almost everything to the center of the earth. Gravity is also pulling you down even when you are using the parachute. So a parachute does not stop gravity completely, yet it fights against it. So to give you an analogy, so imagine you are sliding down a slide. Even uh, gravity is pulling you so you can go smoothly. Imagine you are sliding down a slide which is rough. Even though gravity is pulling you, there is a roughness so you go slow. That roughness in air is called air resistance or drag. So air is invisible but it's not empty. So when you move through air, you feel some a resistance or a push that's back on you. That push is called air resistance or drag. I've also talked about this in my previous video of forces and motion which I'll keep the link in the description so you can check it out. So now I'm giving you some examples in real life. So imagine you stick your hand out of a moving car, it pushes you back. You run with an umbrella, you feel some push. Then when you wave with a cardboard piece, you feel some resistance. All of those are air resistance that is pushing. So the main key idea is, the bigger the surface air is touching, the more air pushes back. This is the main key idea on how parachutes work. Okay. Now let's imagine a skydiver. Step 1, he jumps off the plane and is plunging down to the earth. His body is narrow so the surface area is small so the air resistance is also small. Gravity is stronger so he is plunging fast. Then suddenly he lets go of his parachute, a huge uh, cloth on foils. Then the surface area increases. So the air resistance also increases so air resistance and gravity battle on and then the, the, the diver safely plunges to the earth. Now two forces act here, gravity and air resistance. And fun fact, when air resistance is almost equal to gravity, that safe and steady speed has a name. It's called terminal velocity. Parachutes are very wide. They are dome or rectangular shape. And then are made from strong, uh, uh, strong and light fabric. So, why it is wide? Because if it's wide, it increases the surface area. More surface area means more resistance. More air resistance meaning it gets more slow. So, yes. And then, why curved shape is? Because a curved shaped parachute can help trap air under the parachute. Like a ball holding water or balloon filling with air. Yeah, air is filling with balloon. So, so this trapped air also creates an extra upward for upward push on it. So let's give you an analogy on this. Imagine you're jumping into a water, in a pool of water in two, in two different ways. A feet first, it'll go it'll go very fast. But then when you're doing a flat belly, you slow down and hurt. So but then gravity works the same. Just there is a different air resistance. So now let's look at the forces that we learned today. Gravity pulls the skydiver down to the earth. Air resistance pushes upward. Then balance forces makes the skydiver plunge down to the earth slow and steadily. So now you know how gravity pulls things down to the earth. How a, uh, how a sky a parachute works. How ra uh, air resistance acts opposite to motion. And a parachute increases air resistance to reduce speed and save lives. So next time when you see a seed floating in the air, a skydiver or a plastic bag in the air, you know the science behind it. And a parachute does not make somebody float. It makes a slow and steady fall further. This is your blood host Nikhil Bala signing off.